In this video I'm going to show you all you need to get playing Gran Turismo 7 on the PS5 using all your high-end sim equipment and of course that includes in PSVR 2. I'm going to show you what you need, how to set it up and include a little tip at the end that will really improve your force feedback. Okay so the first thing you need is this Hori Wide Mini Controller. Unfortunately Sony have blocked the use of PS4 controllers with PS5 games however this one works and in fact if I go to the Drive Hub page which is the second thing you absolutely need it even says requires Hori PS4 Mini Pad you need this and this and if your wheel system is listed as compatible with Drive Hub those are just the two things you would need however in my situation I'm using SimuCube which isn't listed and other bits and bobs so I have to use the gimmicks as well now the software you're going to need on the Gimmix website, just go to downloads, download the latest version, which will generally be this one for you, 8.0 for a Windows PC, this one here. And on Drive Hub, if you click on support, scroll down, there's a file you download here to make sure you get the latest firmware on your Drive Hub. Okay, so the first thing is we need to get this set up and ready. So you need to plug both ends of this into your PC. So USB-A, straight in your PC, don't use a hub. And also the mini USB, loop that out into your PC as well. Side by side imports if you can, doesn't matter. But don't use a hub directly into your PC. After installing the software you downloaded from Gimmicks, you'll have three pieces of software. The other one not shown here is for FPS related games, so get rid of that, we don't need that. So now we're going to run Gimmicks Launcher. You'll be presented with this little window. Ignore config, yours won't look like that. I've already made one, we'll go over that later on. So the first thing you need to do is, as, as I say, ensure both ends of the Gimmicks are in your computer plugged into the USB ports in your computer go to update firmware and choose from the list MUG27 you might think you should be choosing the later wheel the 29 PS4 no choose this one MUG27 click load we'll say it's only compatible with GIMX adapters OK and as you see it says plug both sides of the adapter in the computer when you click OK You'll now have 10 seconds to unplug the cable end and re-plug it back in. And I'll try and move the window on the screen to show you what it does. So I'm getting ready to unplug the cable and plug it back in. I'll click OK here. Right, here we go. Unplugged. Plugged back in. It brings up this terminal. And hopefully I've got a window behind that actually telling me yeah firmware loaded successfully so there we go that's all you need to do to set up the firmware side okay so we got the correct firmware on the gimmicks now it's also worth running that software you downloaded from drive hub just to check the firmware is up to date on this and update it if it isn't mine already was but you won't need that download again you can just delete it job done now i'm going to show you how to connect it all so that faffs out the way you can sit in your rig we can make up a config and you can get playing okay so as you can see there's numerous ports on the back of here four ports the last accessory one we're not going to use we don't need so the first little one can't really read it very well on there but says console so that's what your ps5 plugs into it's mini usb i've got it coming out the back of my ps5 in the other room through the wall into the mini usb in here so ps5 into the first one the second one is just listed as controller. Plug your Hori pad into there. So PS5 Hori mini pad. Lastly, you've got wired slash, uh, sorry, wheel slash controller. And that is where the Gimmicks plugs in. So the USB-A, put that in your PC, not in a hub, straight in your PC. And the mini USB end comes out into the wired controller so let me just run through that again ps5 into the mini usb hori pad into controller gimmick mini usb end into the wire sorry wheel controller there okay job done let's get setting it up 
Okay, so I'm now in my rig with the PS5 on, and as you can see, the drive hub is getting power there. It's got the two little green logo lights on and a spinning red figure of eight. I must mention that you can't turn your PS5 on with the Hori mini pad. So you either need to turn it on before you get in your rig or just have your dual sense to hand, which is useful anyway, especially if you play VR and you want to use the showroom, you need this to move around. But also, if while you're sat there, you actually want to use your PlayStation for YouTube and stuff, this doesn't really let you navigate it properly. Um, so you need one of these, just keep one to hand, it's useful. Okay, so let's create a Gimmix config. We'll run Gimmix config and you'll be presented with this window. Don't worry if it looks a little daunting, it's quite straightforward. The first thing we need to do is just go to type and choose G27. Don't try anything else. If you remember, that's the firmware we put on the Gimmix. That's what you need to use. We'll choose that. I like to do my axes first, so I'm going to click the axes tab. Auto detect. Turn my wheel. Bosh, Simu Cube comes up choose what it is in the axis type it's my wheel you can put in a label if you want on every input i don't bother don't need to really and just click add now i'm going to do the same thing with the pedals click auto detect push my throttle change the axis type to gas and this time when i click add there'll be an extra step so press fully on the pedal release and any button i click the mouse done and do the same with the brake and clutch so auto detect press my brake change it to brake here click add press it all the way release it click the mouse press any button and finally auto detect press my clutch change it to clutch click add push it all the way release all the way press any button Simple as that, that's all my axes done. Okay, so you've got your axes done and a really vital bit I nearly forgot about is now just setting your force feedback. So come across to the overall tab, auto detect, turn your wheel, and that's obviously the device that's gonna be utilizing force feedback. Now, from what I can tell, the only thing here that makes a difference is constant. Don't believe damper seems to do anything or spring rumble. Uh, I'm not totally sure. Test it. But constant is basically your overall force feedback strength. And um, because this is getting on the nearly 30 Newton meter uh, wheelbase, I have it quite low. So in my config, I've actually got this down to 15. Um, but obviously you can play with it however you like. If you want to adjust it and you're in game, all you have to do is close the terminal window, the Gimmicks terminal window, then open up your config, adjust it, and then click start again. You don't have to leave the game or anything like that. You can just keep going. Okay, so that's basically your force feedback. As I say, it's just constant you have to worry about. That is your overall force feedback strength. Okay, so I've got my axes done. I'm gonna go across and put the button tab on and move on to this bit now. The good thing about Gran Turismo 7 is when you go into the controller page where it shows a diagram of your wheel and all the buttons, you can swap everything over. So if you assign a button to do a certain function and it does something completely different, it doesn't matter. You can just swap it over in game, which is pretty fantastic. Um, but we'll just assign the uh, obvious buttons you need assigned and like I say, worry about them later in game, what they actually do. So we'll do auto detect the obvious ones to do first, left paddle has to be L1, which is change down, uh, change down shift, and auto detect right paddle, and change that to R1, add. So we've got down gear and up gear in game. And as you can see, if I bring up the list, you can see everything here. You basically want to get all these added on and then L1, uh, L2, L3. If you can fit everything, do. I don't think everything's used, like L4 and L5. Um, don't worry too much about it. Just get the main things done. Now, shifter. This is the great thing. So I've got my BDH shifter here, which I've done a video on in the past. It's um, a really great bit of kit, you know, high a high-end bit of kit. If I want to even use that in-game, I can. Like So look, I'll do auto-detect. 
put that into first gear this is what it shows up as and gear shift one add and I can do go through and do them all except reverse for some reason with this shifter doesn't work don't know why but uh, so I just use a button to, to go into reverse but yeah go through all of that I won't do it now I've already got config right here's my complete gimmicks config now yours will obviously look different but as you can see I've assigned pretty much everything from the button list can't remember which ones aren't used um, so I've just gone ahead and assigned everything but uh, you can see all my devices here my shifter my apex in racing which is the sort of button plates that mount in the dash of the p1 i've got a snes controller here and i've assigned like the d-pad to up down left right so i can use them to navigate in game uh, my steering wheel with various buttons on there even my analog shifter so without leaving the game i can be using this wheel with the paddle shifters but if the car in game has a sequential stick I'll just start using that, don't have to make any changes, it's all there ready to go. Because you can assign the same button more than once, so L1 and R1 as my pedals, I've also got as L1 and R1 on the analog sequential shifter, fantastic. Even my handbrake, although it doesn't work analog, it's just working as the, you know, the circle button, but that's fine. So yeah, you just, um, when you've completed it, you just click save and... Uh, when you then open up Gimex Launcher, let's bring that onto screen. Um, you'll have it there in your config setting, and I've just saved mine as GG7, G27. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click start at the moment. When I do, a UAC security prompt comes up. Obviously, I'll click yes, and then a terminal window will open up with a bunch of info in it. But really, we want to pay attention to the Drive Hub at the moment. So let me just click start right now. Okay, and as you can see, the terminal's come out. Watch the Drive Hub, and it's got the L flashing there. That means it's in Logitech mode. Everything's working. That's great. Um, I said earlier on in the video right in the start that I'd have a little tip at the end for better force feedback but I'll go into it now because this is just where we're setting things up so you want to change the drive hub to Fanatec mode the reason is in Logitech mode in game if you go to look at your wheel in game in the settings it will show it it's a Logitech wheel um, but the force feedback means when you change when you are changing direction if you're turning left and go to change right there's a noticeable like you're hitting a notch hitting a wall turning right it's like you want to get back to center and you you can feel there's not a dead zone like you can control it finally in game but it's the force feedback is an unpleasant notch fanatec mode really gets rid of that and when you go into game and look at your controls you'll see your wheel as a fanatec csl i believe um so yeah that's what you really want to do and to do that you need to just hold down start and select which hopefully you've bound in the config here so you know i've got a start and uh, a select and i know what buttons i've bound them to so when you hold them down let me get the raging cat out of the way it's getting a bit uh, playful when you hold them down it will basically turn it off and then when you turn it back on next it will be in fanatec mode and so what I'm going to do is hold start and select now for a few seconds until watch the drive hub there we go the drive hub's gone off close the terminal window which effectively closes the gimmick software and we're back to where we was you would only need to do this once you don't need to do it again so now when I click start Hopefully you'll see on the drive hub, it should flash F. There you go, a few Fs. That's it, it's in Fanatec mode. So remember to do that, it is much better for speed back. And you, as I say, you just do it once and then you're done. Okay, so that is set up done. You don't need to mess with that ever again. So now when you jump in your rig and you want to play Gran Turismo 7, with all your high-end gear all you got to do is double click gimmicks launcher and it'll bring up 
this little launcher like we saw before it'll already have your config selected so you just have to press start and there we go it's running and as you can see the drive hub is lit up there flashing its F so you are in fanatec mode already because you've already just done that and that's it we don't need that I'll move that out the way now I don't have the PS5 connected to this TV so I'm going to use remote play which is pretty fantastic uh, usually I play in PSVR 2 so I don't even need that because obviously everything shows in there but let me double click PS remote play and show you that everything is up and running okay you can see I'm now on track and everything is working my steering wheel and I've got no horrible notch at the center of steering range gear shifter and obviously pedals everything works as it should I've even got rotaries set up for the MFD you can see that changing as I turn those fantastic my handbrake even though it's not analog it's on or off but fine uh, everything works just as it should okay I just want to draw your attention really to one last detail if you look at the terminal there in the top left all those lines about your steering angle uh, where it says adjust range to 1080 don't worry about that that's whenever you're in menu for example if I pause the game we'll change to 1080 uh, what you need to worry about is the line it gives you when you jump in car on track like if I continue it knows this car is 900 so it's just changed to 900 for me because I use SimuCube I would then come into the SimuCube software, drop down my profile, I've got one made for 900. It's all the same, just the steering angle is changed for me. And so if you come out of this race, you would come out and it would say 1080. So I say ignore that, that's just for menus. And then you jump into, say, a GT3 race, it might say adjust to 540 once you get on track. And then just jump into whatever software you're using to change your steering angle to that um, possibly the logitech mode does it itself you might not have to change it don't quote me on that but it, it doesn't matter regardless you won't want to use it because of the horrible notch as you change from left to right across the center of the steering range so you want to be in fanatec mode um, so you just have to change steering angle yourself um, another just little tip really because i only play in vr I can't see any, see any of that so what I do is I actually use the magnifier from the Windows accessibility options so it's zoomed right in so I can see that terminal in huge when I press pass-through mode on the PSVR 2 and because it's quite you know a bit of a blurry mess the pass-through I use magnifier to make it big so I can just see what that number is and also just drop down and choose it in here so I never have to take the headset off um, but yeah, that's it really. I hope the setup was quite straightforward for you. And as I say, to get going now, all you got to do is just run the launcher and that's it. Everything just works. Uh, I will point out if you're using it with remote play, like I am here, I've had it occasionally then, then there's no forced feedback. Generally, I've found that's to do with... Um, uh, you've got to hit this button hit the PS button and then it might come back on or not but most of the time it just works if I'm not using remote play I've never had a problem it's just if I'm running it through remote play occasionally I haven't had forced feedback but clicking that once or twice seems to have brought it back but there you go otherwise it's a fantastic uh, setup you don't need a second rig just for Gran Turismo 7 uh, stupidly I did buy a second rig before I went ahead and did all this but yeah uh, that's that's my problem so uh, yeah that'll do it for now any comments or questions drop below and I'll always try to answer but uh, yeah otherwise that'll do it for now and I'll catch you later cheers